Hold on. <laughs> Okay. I want to welcome everyone. My name is Mark Fallon. I'm the director here at Briarbush Nature Center. I want to thank everyone for coming. Hi. Uh, to this really amazing and unique event, uh, something that we really have never done something like this before, uh, inspired by Lauren Gildas. So Lauren, um, Lauren called myself and, and Karen. Karen is our development director. She's been helping you out, registering you and all those things. Lauren called us at the beginning of the summer of an extremely busy summer camp season and said, I want to come and do a benefit concert at Briarbush. And we said, okay. <laughs> Yes, summer camp is very, very busy, as many of you families who are here know. Uh, and this year we had some staffing issues, so the director and the development director and everyone involved in Briarbush was helping to teach camp this summer. But we decided this was both an event and a cause that was important to us. Um, so Lauren came to us with this idea, and really it was inspired by an activity that he learned from listening to a podcast uh, about how to save a planet. That podcast was primarily about climate change. And it was about this debate, which you may have had with your friends or your family or yourself, this debate about whether we as individuals can really make a difference when it comes to this huge global environmental issue. And so the folks on this podcast, experts kind of debated that back and forth, whether it's something that we as individuals can change or whether it is something that's so big that the only way anything is gonna get better is if there is massive political systemic change, policy change across the world. Now, of course, you know, those things are not mutually exclusive. Of course, everyone can do a little bit and we can try and get governments around the world to do a lot. Uh, but what sort of came out of the synthesis of those two ideas was this idea that you as an individual, your carbon footprint, which of course was such a big deal when we start, first started learning about climate change, what's your carbon footprint? How do you lower your carbon footprint? Well, your carbon footprint is something like 0.00000000000 one percent of global emissions of carbon. So no matter how good you do in your life, it really doesn't make a big difference. But, but, here's the big thing. By living about wanting to uh, reduce your carbon footprint, you are inspiring other people, okay? And you are more likely to simply talk about climate change. Now, a lot of folks are afraid to talk about this issue. It is highly politically charged. But the fact is that the huge majority of Americans care about the issues related to climate change. So most often it's two people who are both worried about talking to each other about this issue when really they're both wanting to make a change. Uh, so the conclusion really was we have to talk about it. 
And, you know, part of that can be you are trying to live a lower carbon footprint life. But that's not the only thing that you can do. Uh, so we're going to do a little activity that really inspired Lauren to, to be here and for this to happen tonight. Uh, so we're going to pass out some clipboards. And hopefully you have some pens. I don't know if pens got to the cheap seats over here. <laughs> but we will get them to you. And raise your hand if you know what a Venn diagram is. My 14-year-old should be raising his hand right now. All right. So a Venn diagram, very simply, is one of those diagrams where you draw a circle. And then you draw another circle. And you see where those things intersect. You see where those things intersect. So what we're going to do, when you're ready, we're going to start with a circle up at the top of your paper. We need three circles, so make sure you leave room for three. Great. We're going to have some circle drawing music here. There are a lot of songs about circles. <laughs> All right. So when you're ready, we're going to draw that first circle at the top. In that circle, I want you to label joy. Joy. Things that bring you joy or happiness. All right? So that's what we're going to write or draw or color in that first circle is things that you love to do. Things that you wouldn't be you if you didn't get to do these things. So I know for Lauren, it's watching Netflix all the time. Uh, for Lauren, it's playing music. Uh, for me, it's sailing. For my son over here, it's theater, musical theater. <laughs> Anyone want to share? What, what brings you joy? What do you love to do? What are some things that you can't live without? Anyone want to raise their hand? Yes, over here. Painting. Anyone else love to paint? Yes. Okay. Any other ideas? Things that you love to do? lovely ones. I heard playing with my mom and doing circus arts. All right. So these are things that you love to do. These are things that you're going to do in your life no matter what. No one's going to stop you, right? So then we're going to draw another circle. And we're going to make a triangle. So this one is going to, to be off to the right or the left. And in this circle, I want you to write things that you are good at. So sometimes those things intersect, right? You might have the things that bring you joy are also things you're good at. So they can be in that same circle. They can be matching each other. Some of us, like me, we have things that bring us joy, but we're not so good at them. And as you'll see in just a little bit, for me, that's playing music. I love it. I'm seeing some conversation happening here. 
And this is really the whole idea behind this exercise. Because the last circle that we're going to draw are climate issues. The climate issues. So what are issues that come about, changes that come about with a warming climate? You know, I don't I don't like to say that, you know, global warming is not necessarily intrinsically bad, right? It is a huge change, a global environmental change, and it's caused by people. And it is disruptive, extremely disruptive, and dangerous for us. Even in our own backyard. So when we talk about climate change, you know, for a long time, a lot of people that I know we're only thinking that climate change was going to affect people who lived right next to the ocean, right? But we already know that it affects the entire planet, including right here in Abington. Every summer storm that we have now dumps more rain in a shorter period of time. So flooding, stormwater issues, those are all extremely linked with climate change. So maybe that's an issue that you want to work on in terms of the climate. Or it might be urban hotspots. So in a city, it's always hotter than anywhere else. So in a city like Philadelphia, in the summer it's hot, well now in the summer it's even hotter. And it compounds on itself and it's dangerous for people. So what can we do to fix it? What can we do? So the last step in this activity is to look at those things that bring you joy. And look at those things that you're good at look at those issues that you really care about in terms of climate change. Is it coastal flooding? Maybe you have a shore house. And see if you can tie any of those three things together. You love to paint, right? You could do some painting. Paintings of before and after. Paintings of a stream in flood. You love to do circus art. You could create a circus show that talks about the climate growing warmer and people coming together and making it grow colder. So we're hoping that these little lifts and doodles will just get you thinking. We're hoping that the music tonight will inspire you, that you can take some of this home and talk about it. Because that is really the most important thing. It's not going to change until all of us are talking about it. It's something easy to ignore if you're not talking about it. So I welcome you here to Briarbush. I welcome you into this idea and this activity, and hopefully this community are talking about this important issue. And without further ado, I want to introduce Lauren and his friend, Kara, who will be entertaining us tonight. This first song is a song that my sister, different sister, Kara, wrote. It's about wildflowers. See if you can catch the names of the wildflowers in here. The sun was the color of golden red. 
sky forget me not blue pearly everlasting's not for us I will always love you The color of golden rock Sky, forget me not blue Pretty everlasting's not for us I will always love you You colored my heart with an Indian paintbrush Gentle as Queen Anne's lace You loved me with a heart that was true Took me to this beautiful place The color of golden light. Sky, forget me not blue Pearly everlasting not for us I will always love you You colored my heart with an Indian paintbrush Gentle as Queen Anne's lace You loved me with a heart that was true Took me to this beautiful place 